because we have forgotten. We belong to each other. One love, one heart, one destiny. We are one humanity. Be the reason someone smiles today. make sure that everybody's kind of keeping on the up and up we are are you looking for opportunities are you looking for those things that are coming along that you weren't expecting all the good things that are coming out of this every day I wake up and I think god it's another great day and last night I spent a I probably spent 10 minutes going through a list of gratitudes that I just um I had to do it just felt so good I was so comfortable and and Katie was all snuggled up beside me. And next thing I know, I was sound asleep. So we're just going to keep moving along with that. And um, I think if there's any, if there's any, oh, what would you say? If there's anything I can pass along, that is keep your focus on what you want. Keep creating what you want. Every thought you have is creating something in the future, whether it's fear or whether it's what you want. But if you want to, if you want to keep creating something new, then do that. Think about that. Relish in that. If you, because I don't think anybody wants to, to cause anybody fear. I don't think anybody wants anybody to be ill. Yet when we worry about people, that's what you're doing. You're projecting your thoughts of that person or yourself into the future in such a way that you don't want. So I just am asking you from a friend, from your minister, from a fellow human being, stop doing that. <laughs> and uh, we are going to continue on. And so I would like... Um, I would like to ask Diane Sardoni to do the reading for us. Diane, I'm going to uh, unmute you. Diane, there we go. Hello. All right. There's a, okay, Diane. Okay, can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Okay. Reading I chose that I thought was appropriate for this time is a Hopi prayer for peace. Great Spirit and all unseen, this day we pray and ask you for guidance. Humbly we ask you to help us and fellow men to have recourse to peaceful ways of life because of uncontrolled disciplineness of by mankind. Help us all to love, not to hate one another. We ask you all to be seen in an image of love and peace. Let us be seen in beauty, the colors of the rainbows. We respect our mother, the planet, and our cornfields with our loving care. From her breast, we receive our nourishment. Let us, let us not listen to the voices of the two-hearted, the destroyers of the mind, the haters of self-made leaders whose lust for power and wealth will lead us into confusion and darkness. 
Seek visions always of world beauty, not violence, not battlefields. It is our duty to pray always for harmony between man and earth so that the earth will bloom once more. Let us show our emblem of love and goodwill for all life and land. Pray for the house of glass, which is the United Nations. Pray for it within our minds, clear and pure as ice and mountain streams. Pray for the great leaders of nations in the house of Micah, who in their own quiet ways help the earth in balance. We pray the great spirit that one day our mother earth will be purified into the healthy, peaceful one. Let us sing for strength of wisdom with all nations for the good of all people. Our hope is not yet lost. Purification must be restored to the health of our mother earth for lasting peace and happiness, for land and life. Together with all nations, we hold this world in balance. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> all right. So those are beautiful words. And again, those words are focusing on the looking at what you want. See the beauty in the world and not the things that you don't want because you don't want to recreate what's already happening now. So um, before we go on, uh, next, I'm going to ask uh, Jan to do the daily word. But before we do that, I want to mention that on uh, this Wednesday at six o'clock, Debbie Dem is going to be doing a channeling of Kuan Yin and St. Germain. And so I invite everybody to join us for that. This is going to be really exciting. So I'm pretty happy about it. At six o'clock, I'll be sending out the link uh, later today or tomorrow. I just didn't want it to get confused with what we're doing today. So um, look for that link. And I apologize for all the emails. You know, I don't like to get a bunch of emails, but after I had already set up this, this uh, meeting, I got notification from Zoom that password is mandatory and entering into waiting room is also mandatory. So we're just doing our best to try to keep up and keep you all safe. So um, that was the only big announcement that I had is just that. Um, I will tell you that, um, that I finished cleaning out our storage locker of 30 years of stuff. I mean, it's been there about two years, but we brought it over from Nashville. So I'm going to be having a pretty big, um, what do you call it? Parking lot sale as soon as I can, <laughs> because I had a lot of stuff in there. So I think you're going to uh, hear, for, hear about that as soon as we get a little less social distancing involved. But thank you all so much for all your support and love. Um, if you scroll up on your chat screen, you'll see that I put the link for the PayPal. And I completely, I mean, just totally and completely love and appreciate each one of you that have been able to donate. And those that can't, I totally love and appreciate you just as much. Thank you all for being here today. So now, if we could have Jan do the daily word. Uh, today is Palm Sunday, April 5th. And the word for the day is Hosanna. With joy, love, and faith, I celebrate my growing Christ awareness. Shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna, arise as the people cover the dusty road with palm branches, greeting Jesus with great enthusiasm as he rides a donkey into Jerusalem, according to the gospel stories. Spiritually understood, the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem symbolizes the dawning of Christ awareness in the heart of humankind. The crowd shouts of Hosanna represent prayers that this dawning Christ awareness be protected and nurtured. I reflect on this powerful story, seeing in myself both the dawning Christ awareness and the shouting crowd of thoughts responding to the Christ light. On this Palm Sunday, my heart sings Hosanna. I celebrate the growing Christ awareness in the Jerusalem of my soul. And Mark 11.10, blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, 
Hosanna in the highest heaven. Thank you, that's Unity's Daily Word. Thank you, Jan, that was beautiful. Um, and Larry, are you ready with the white bison reading? I am, okay. can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, this is the elders meditation of the day. And it's by Oren R. Lyons, spokesman for the traditional circle of elders. As we plunge ahead to build empires and race for supremacy, we should stop and listen to the female song of life. For without the female, there is no life. Women are created with the ability to produce life. Women have a special tie to the earth mother. They have something in common. They are the source of life. The earth mother gives songs to the woman to sing. These songs are about life, about beauty, about children, about love, about family, strength, caring, nurturing, and about forgiveness and about God. The world needs to pay attention and listen to her. She knows. And the prayer is, Great Spirit, let me listen to her songs. Aho. Beautiful, Larry. Thank you. And thank you both so much. And Diane, you as well. Um, before we go on, I want to just mention that we're trying to keep these uh, online gatherings to 30 minutes, somewhere around there anyway. Um, that's a be best practice from several different sources on the internet. And um, also, last week we tried to sing um, what was it? Oh, One Humanity, which didn't work out very well because of the latency issues. So we're not going to be doing that, but I'll be playing songs in the beginning and muting everybody so that everybody can sing along at their own pace, whatever their own, um, their own uh, broadband will allow them. So that's kind of what's going on. And always, always, if you are interested in having some sort of a class online or presentation or uh, like Barry Kerr has offered to do a, an astrology class, we're going to see if we can get that going and other people have also um, jumped in for ideas and I love that so let's just keep the community together let's keep connecting with each other because like I said before there's nothing more important than that we need each other right now more than ever and we need to stay connected more than ever especially while we're you know separated so um, I think that's on I think that's all for right now okay uh, we're going to ask Karen, I'm going to keep everybody muted through Karen's talk, which is going to be 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Where are we at time wise? Okay, <clears throat> got about 10 minutes. And then, uh, okay, words to the songs would be nice when we do so. Thank you very much, Jeff. I'll keep that in mind and I can definitely do that. I'm just, uh, just keep giving me ideas and critiques and feedback because I'm not working this in a vacuum. We're all in this. So Karen, I'm going to unmute you and um, we're going to. Do you want video too? Or you think oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take myself off of video. So we save some of that broadband. Okay. okay. All right, everybody. Here's Karen Reedstrom. Like share screen, right? Yes. Um, so share screen. Uh, can you see it now? No. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can see the little characters? You're beautiful. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, play. All right. So my topic is the catharsis of comedy and why we need it in these trying times. Um, I'm sure you're seeing all these kind of jokes right now. Um, he went to Jared's, you know, look at the toilet paper roll. Everyone's trying to cheer themselves up and this is a very healthy thing. So what makes things or situations funny? For example, here, you know, it's a joke on a pastor, priest, and a rabbi walk into a bar, except it's not a bar you drink at, it's a bar. <laughs> so that's a, like a funny situation. Um, 
the ancient Greeks had found that comedy and tragedy are very, very similar. They seem to be opposites, but do they have something very fundamental and healing in common? For example, the, this, the cats find this funny, but I don't think the birds are gonna find it much funny. So let's take an example from the novel of Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. Now, Sancho Panza was Don Quixote's squire on their adventures. And one night, Sancho stumbles over a cliff and he's hanging on all night and he is terrified and he's alone and he's imagining this terrible death. And in the morning when the sun comes out, well, if it was a tragedy, he would have fallen off the cliff and his terror would have been justified and we would cry for him in sympathy. But in the novel, because it's a comedy, he was actually only a few feet from the ground all the time. Terror suddenly dissolves into a ridiculous situation and we laugh with Sancho. Now, comedy is an imitation of the ridiculous, like his situation. It excites laughter and is something ugly or distorted without causing the person who's laughing pain. So laughter releases tension from fear or worry. Now, tragedy depicts the downfall of a basically good person through some fatal error or misjudgment, arousing pity and fear on the part of the audience. We release tears of, from tension or worry that we have in our actual real lives. So catharsis is a term from the ancient Greeks and it means cleansing. A catharsis is an emotional discharge through which we can achieve a state of moral or spiritual renewal and achieve a state of liberation from anxiety or stress. It can also be any other radical change that leads a person to emotional rejuvenation. Renew, uh, rejuvenation. So for example, in tragedy, it's therapeutic. In Romeo and Juliet, Romeo commits suicide thinking Juliet is dead. Juliet wakes up and she finds that Romeo's dead and then she kills herself. Now we see this scene and it might trigger memories of someone we may have lost. Because we're able to relate to it, we suddenly experience sympathetic emotions. Our tensions, our worries, our old griefs are released through this, 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 this crying, this, this therapeutic emotion. So what do tragedy and comedy have in common? Are they opposites? Are they both some kind of emotional release? Now, let's think about Sancho hanging on the cliff all night. He is feeling real terror on this false assumption. Now, all of us have felt this way in terrifying situations. We sympathize with him in the beginning. We feel his fear is real. We've been there. We are like him. And we know what it's truly, you know, we don't know what's truly true yet. But when the truth is revealed, the fear, the, all that pent-up fear is purged by laughter at the ridiculous situation. How many times have we said, boy, did I feel stupid, and we laugh, and, and others laugh too. Does this process seem familiar? Recall how tragedy can, call emo can cause emotion and release of pent-up emotions. Kurt Vonnegut, I think, summed it up very well. Laughter and tears are both responses to frustration and exhaustion. I myself prefer to laugh since there is less cleaning up to do afterwards. <laughs> so what is laughter? Let's look at laughter in real life. What observations can we make about laughter? Like we're all worried about the virus and we laugh at images like these because they're pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it's a physical reaction. Laughter is a physical reaction, but it can have many causes. For example, you could be tickled or you could be a drunk and drunks laugh or they cry. Um, a crazy people laugh a lot. Nitrous oxide makes you laugh. And you know, a shy girl tittering at a cute guy, laughter. But is that comedy? Is evoking laughter necessary for comedy? What does laughter involve? Well, something is laughed at, someone does the laughing, and there's a relationship between the object of laughter and the one who laughs. <laughs> How do our observations of laughter meet the criteria for comedy? Purely physical laughter has a person laughing, but no real object of or relationship. So we can fool out like tickling and nitrous oxide and crazy people and drunks because there's no relationship and no object. So here's an example of a father who has filmed his son and, and uh, his friend riding a dirt bike he just bought him. And they have two very different reactions. Now, one person's horrified, the father. It's like his son. His son can be injured. It's like, oh my God. So he's not laughing because the object between the two people are similar 
but the relationship is an important one, so the person's not laughing. Or as a kid watching this film that's now been put up on the internet, oh man, what goofballs, he's laughing because he doesn't know these guys. He doesn't have any you know, skin in the game with these people. So he's just looking at the pure physical catastrophe that he finds funny. So you have all of these things are connected. So we have a certain kind of object that's funny, the values that we have that generate feelings about that object and a certain frame of mind. So we're gonna explore these things. So in this cartoon here, the guy is an Apple user. He loves Apple products. So the, the fellow on the right with the car, it's like simple, on, off, run smoothly. You don't have to worry about it. Where the Windows car, I mean, it's just a big mess. So a person who's an Apple person will find this very funny because there's the object of the laughter, the, the, the comparison. The person has the value of the, um, um, the Apple computer because he's bought one, and so it makes him laugh. So there's certain kinds of objects. Let's explore that. What do all these objects have in common? Well, they're, they're ridiculous. I mean, a toy. A dog with some weird human teeth, weird hairstyles, a giant hamburger. We all laugh at these things and we see them. Now, our values. For ridicule, we must show the sheer absurdity of valuing the object serious at all. So if you need 144 rolls of toilet paper for a 14-day quarantine, you probably should have been seeing a doctor long before COVID-19. So the image is hoarders are ridiculous. And we laugh and we see this. So a certain frame of mind. How we react to comedy can also depend on our mood, our context, or what we're valuing in that particular moment. So if you're attending the funeral of a beloved comic, humor may be very appropriate. If you're attending the funeral of your best friend's teenager who committed suicide, you probably would not be receptive to suicide jokes. So what is the benefit of laughter? Well, this is a picture of me when I was three years old. And that's kind of how I've always felt about life. Uh, so like tragedy's catharsis, the release, comedy's laughter is a release of certain negative emotions that transition us back to a state of relaxation or concern. Laughter turns negative situations that cause emotions like fear, poof, into nothing. Laughter destroys concern. Laughter gives us a euphoric feeling of freedom. So what is the benefit of laughter? Well, according to the Mayo Clinic, there's short-term benefits, like it stimulates many organs. It enhances your intake of oxygen-rich air, stimulates your heart, your lungs, your muscles, and increases the endorphins that are released by your brain. It activates and releases the stress response. It fires up then cools down your stress response. It can increase and decrease your heart rate and blood pressure. It soothes tension. Laughter can stimulate circulation and muscle relaxation, both of which can help reduce symptoms of stress. What are the long-term effects? Well, it improves your immune system. Negative thoughts, we all know this, manifest in the chemical reactions that can affect your body by bringing more stress into your system. By contrast, positive thoughts can actually release neuropeptides that help fight stress and potentially serious illness. It'll relieve pain. Laughter can ease pain by causing the body to produce its own natural painkiller. This is the Mayo Clinic. Increases your own personal satisfaction. It can make easier to cope with dif difficult situations. That's why astronauts and test pilots and people in dangerous situations and, and jobs, you know, it's like, oh, Joe bought the farm. Well, that's their way of easing the tension of their fear that they might be next. So dark humor is very important in very dangerous jobs. And it also helps you connect with other people. It improves your mood. Now, many people experience depression, sometimes due to chronic illnesses. Laughter can help lessen depression and anxiety and make you feel happier. So put humor on your horizon. Find items such as photos or greeting cards, stuff around the house that make you chuckle and hang them up to remind you to laugh. Keep, watch funny movies or look at great funny books. Like I'm gonna uh, get Woody Allen's uh, book on his, his uh, life. I think that's it's supposed to be pretty funny. Uh, online jokes and websites, that's where I found all these jokes. Uh, so laugh and the world is gonna laugh with you. Find a way to laugh about your own situations and watch your stress begin to fade away. Even if it feels forced at first, practice laughing and it does your body good. So share a laugh, call a friend who makes you laugh 
and then return the favor by sharing funny things with them. But know what isn't funny. Don't laugh at the expense of others. Some forms of humor aren't appropriate. Use your best judgment to discern a good joke from a bad or hurtful one. So where do astronauts hang out? Did anyone get this one? Yeah. It's the space bar. So thank you very much. And here's my credits. Um, and I hope that um, you will think about laughter and try to lighten this situation with um, making your friends laugh and making yourself laugh. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Karen. I think we all needed a good laugh today. So we appreciate that a lot. I'll have um, to share, stop share. Yeah, that's okay. We'll get that. Can you do that? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I laughed. I saw a few chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. Uh, oh, geez, where did where did everybody go? Um, I'm gonna unmute everybody. And before I do that, I'll, I want to uh, mention that we have the new Birdie Health Fair website up, and that is, you know, every month we were doing those, or just about every month we were doing those Birdie Health Fairs. I think the last couple of times we did it at the uh, rec center, which is now closed. So we can, uh, we're looking at different ways to bring you some of this healing, healing energy through the internet to each one of you by doing that. And if you could just uh, visit our website at verdehealthfair.com, verde, V-E-R-D-E, healthfair.com. I don't think I need to really, uh, spell the whole thing out for you do I nah I'm trying to get my thing about there we go okay so we got some ideas here and I'm going to excuse me I'm going to unmute everybody okay if you've muted yourself it didn't unmute you so thank you for uh being silent there <laughs> let's see so what do we have um just Please mute. put the PayPal up again. I just did. I put the PayPal link up again. Um, Deidre says, Karen, thank you. That was perfect. Uh, she only broke up once that I heard. And then Julie Santa Maria said, Karen, how about doing that presentation on the news channel? Break the stress. That was great. <laughs> and Karen, all audio and video were good, except for two second breakup one time. Exactly. Oh, thank you, Catherine Morningstar. Love from Arizona to you. You need to take a day trip, or not a day trip, but a road trip out here. Does anybody have any questions they would like to um, ask? You can raise your hand. You can see at the bottom. This is Barry. Hi, Barry. Um, I, I want everybody to know I'm so excited. Tonight, I'm going to take out the garbage, and I'm trying to decide what to wear. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you are so funny. You want to tell us a little, are, are you ready to, to mention anything about your, your class or your talk coming up? We haven't decided on a, on a oh, date, but we could talk about it real quick. Oh, I, I teach classes one-on-one uh, -on -one with people. I've been doing that online for a while. So I have materials ready to, to share, but I've, I've been thinking a long time about wanting to work with a, a small group. So if anybody out there is interested in participating and learning astrology, if you something that you've kind of thought about, of, I'd like to learn a little bit more deeper about astrology, what the meaning of the signs and the planets and how it all works. I'd, love to, I'd like, love to guide you through that. I heard an airplane. So that's why it's mine. I'm sort of formulating how it's going to work. I love that bird. I know. I got to find the. There it is, Sandy's. Okay. Feel free to encourage me by sending me an email or something. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Barry. So keep your eyes posted for a date when Barry is going to be speaking. Uh, Karen Reedstrom says we're having a virtual flute circle on Friday at noon. So email Karen at K. K. Lee Reedstrom at gmail.com. K L E E Reedstrom at gmail.com. I think you can see it uh, if you want to attend via Zoom. And then it went uh, very well last uh, two weeks ago when we had one. It went, went really well. We learned a lot and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, good. I would like to, to keep I would this like stuff going, right? Hello. 
Kimberly. Yeah, hi. Um, I would like to conduct, if I can, like Karen did today, some kind of a uh, couch or chair Zoom yoga class. Ooh. Since we're all home. <laughs> captive audience. <laughs> yeah, captive audience. Get you moving in your yeah. chair. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Just send me details and uh, okay. we can look at dates and times that work for you. A little levity might help. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, now with regard to the Wednesday channeling by De Debbie Dem, uh, she has asked that people bring their questions so that uh, they can be addressed directly, you know, rather than nebulous answers from the ether. She wants to be able to channel specific answers to specific questions. So if you would do that, that would be great. Um, and then uh, next week, uh, Arvel and Kalia are scheduled to talk. I, I don't, uh, right now, I don't know if, if that's still going on or not, but I'm guessing it is. So unless I hear differently, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going with. So I invite everybody to join us again next Sunday. And uh, just remember, you know, if you, if you start getting down the doldrums or start getting stressed or anything like that, start thinking about what it is that you want to create after all this opportunity is uh, behind us. Not that the opportunity is behind us, but after this all, all this coronavirus incident is behind us. Um, and do, do what, they're, what the health officials are suggesting. You know, wash your hands a lot. Um, you don't need to use a whole lot of the anti antibacterial stuff because we still need good bacteria. But it does help if you just wash your hands, um, practice social distancing. I don't go out a whole lot, but that's mostly because I'm a prisoner of the computer. <laughs> and uh, of course, if anybody needs a session, a, a hypnotherapy or an NLP session, I'm always available. So please give me a call, text me, uh, whatever you need to do. I'm here to help you. I'm. I'm Hey, how's it going? I want to make sure you know that I'm doing? present Happy Sunday. for you. So anybody yeah, it looks like there was a couple say? bags of Coke on my porch, so I was a little concerned. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is so cool. My, it's pretty cool. This is all like, wants to do is interested in doing a collaborative art um, Yeah, project. for some reason, mine and my mom's and a few other people's got popped off of there. But yeah, it's just wrapping up. So. Hey, Chris. Yeah, it's really cool. I still have your jacket. It's, you just got to roll with it because it gets weird once in a while. CJ. <laughs> cool. So CJ, it's okay I still I have your jacket, that. man. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to sign off that. then. And, oh, let's see. Karen oh, would like to do a virtual concert of Native Flutes. You just go on the web and bring it on. You just go on the web and self-contract it. Karen, I think that's a great idea. So, uh, look, anybody has any ideas of what they want to be doing or offering online through the CUL channel, please, I'm open to just about everything. I think you all know that, right? So, um, just send me your ideas, send me a synopsis, send me days that work for you, and we'll get things scheduled. I know we have a lot of talented, talented people. So, uh, Let's see, how about a Zoom training class for us all? Well, I can do that. <laughs> Thanks, Marsha. Um, did I miss anybody's questions? Okay, let's see here. Let's just do this. Stand by. Stand by, stand by. Okay, I think it's a little quieter now. Uh, Carlton, let's see, Carlton can post on website through the blog. Uh, let's see. Not quite sure what that. I think she can post the um, the website on on the blog. But Carlton, if you'll just um, clarify that in the next couple of seconds, I'd appreciate it because I'm not quite sure what you were saying there. Oh, would you put the website up here? Okay, here I can do that. Let's see. Verdi Health. Jeez, I can't do this. Health Fair. Mm -hmm. prettyhealthfair.com yeah yeah it's really nice it has all of us um practitioners on it it's still being worked on but it's a beautiful and carlton and um uh, 
Allison are doing a fabulous job on putting information up there. So please give them your support. And we will try to get some of those programs going for us at home. Yeah, you know. Us homebound. I never thought I'd be homebound for all those years of traveling, but there it is. Okay. I think so got- there you go. And we love you very much. Um, again, next week is Arvel and Kalia. To the best of my knowledge, I haven't heard anything differently. And Wednesday is Debbie Dem's channeling session of Kuan Yin, St. Germain, and other Ascended Masters. Watch for Barry Kerr's uh, class and talk coming up very soon, as soon as I can get, get both of those scheduled with him. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for all your donations, and thank you for being here today. Ciao, everybody. Oh, bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.